Now the first myth of diabetes is that it's genetic, but it isn't. Remember the statistic I shared earlier? From 1983 to 2008, the number of people worldwide with diabetes increased from 35 million to 240 million or sevenfold. Now this couldn't happen with a purely genetic or inherited disorder. We've been led to believe that diabetes is a genetic disorder that we inherited from our parents, and that if we have a family history of diabetes, we're more likely to get it, and that diabetes is essentially a random event over which we have no control. The truth is very different. Diabetes is almost entirely induced by environmental and lifestyle factors. Now, there may be some predisposing genes, but those genes only get turned on under certain conditions, conditions of poor diet, sedentary lifestyle, stress, and environmental toxins. Searching for the gene for diabetes and the magic bullet to treat it will lead us down a false road and waste a lot of time and money. It removes our focus from the most important target, addressing the modifiable lifestyle and environmental factors that are driving this epidemic in the first place. And what are they? They're how we eat, how much we exercise, how we manage stress, environmental toxins, and our toxic food environment. These are the real underlying causes of diabetes. These factors directly influence our genes, resulting in changes in gene function or expression that leads to the disordered biology called diabetes, hypertension, or elevated cholesterol. Now, for those of you who are still not convinced and believe that diabetes is genetic, let me tell you the story of the Pima Indians, one of the more tragic health stories of our time. 100 years ago, these people were thin and fit and suffered none of the diseases of Western civilization, such as obesity, heart disease, or diabetes. Their metabolism evolved to thrive perfectly on special foods that exist only in the desert environment. And what were these foods? Well, they were whole grains, squash, legumes, chilies, mesquite, acorns. In short, they ate a diet of whole, unrefined foods. In one generation, the Pima Indians have become one of the most obese populations in the world, second only to the Samoans. 80% have type 2 diabetes by the time they reach 30. They have a life expectancy of only 46 years old. So what happened? Did they suddenly mutate and get the obesity gene? No. The answer is much more complicated. Scientists estimate that the traditional Pima diet, although seasonally variable, was approximately 70 to 80 percent carbs, 8 to 12 percent fat, and 12 to 18 percent protein. But before you begin back on your old bagel, potato, pasta, and low-fat muffin diet, let's consider what kind of carbohydrates they ate. The traditional Pima's diet was filled with low glycemic load meals. The carbs the Pima ate converted very slowly to sugar in their bodies. These were the good carbs. The information contained in the food they ate changed when their diet changed. The Pima then went from eating foods that sent good messages to their genes to balance their weight to eating foods that directed their bodies and their genes to gain weight and develop diabetes. These new carbs had a high glycemic load, they were digested much too quickly, and they caused insulin levels to spike and blood sugar to spike. These were the bad carbs. This is what they eat now. As a consequence of this change in their diet, they went from being a healthy people who were exquisitely adapted to their environment to one of the fattest, least healthy cultures on the planet in a single generation. But how does the situation of the Pimas actually relate to you? Well, after all, you weren't raised eating chia and mesquite. Actually, the dietary shifts and health consequences we have seen in our own culture over the last 50 years are surprisingly similar. Obesity rate in this country has tripled since 1960. This date corresponds directly to two major dietary shifts. First, low-fat diets started being promoted by the government, food corporations, and the pharmaceutical industry. And second, the absence of fat meant that we started filling our diets with highly processed carbohydrates that are cheap to produce and very profitable. As scientifically unfounded as these claims regarding a low-fat diet were, they had a major impact on the health of the American people. Our fat consumption declined dramatically. High glycemic load carbs skyrocketed, and the consequence, two-thirds of our population is now overweight. Obesity will soon overtake smoking as the single largest cause of death in this country. For the first time since the Industrial Revolution, the life expectancy of the average American is declining despite all of our medical and public health advances. 
Obesity will take nine years off the life of the average person. Obesity in adolescence creates the same risk of premature death as heavy smoking. Have no doubt, diabetes is not a genetic disorder. It is a direct outcome of dietary and lifestyle factors turning on all the wrong genes that we have complete control over. The Pimas didn't have much of a choice about this. You do.